Hey guys, I wanted to send you a really, really fast video. Um, I'm going to do this all in one take. It's not going to be super pretty. Um, but as I've been visiting with some of you girls the last week or two, something that I keep hearing over and over and over again um, is that you don't know how to work your business with small children at home. And I really feel like that is something that um, was a struggle for me for a long time. Um, I started my business with no children at all. Um, and Ellie was born after I'd been a consultant for a couple of years. And then um, I earned my first car in 2014 in April, May, June, and July. In August, I had Finley. And then September, October, November, we did DIQ. And December 1st, I was a sales director with a three-month-old baby. Um, and right now, we are in requalifications, and my in-law was born in February. So I started my business with no babies, and now I'm a sales director with three little ones at home and in car requalifications with a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and an eight-month-old. So I get it. I, I totally get it, and I am in your boat, and I feel like it was a lot of trial and error before we figured out how to make my business run smoothly with little people in my home, because something that I'm really passionate about and I believe really strongly is that Mary Kay was designed for women, for women to be able to work businesses and still love their babies, and a lot of times when girls talk to their sales director or talk to you know, people about how do I make this work, the answer they always get is find a good babysitter. You know, and, and I and I agree, and I think that babysitters are great, but the reason that we're doing this is to be home more with our kiddos, and so I don't think the answer is always give them to a babysitter. And so I want to talk to you guys just really, really fast about a couple of things that I feel like have worked for me really well, um, and then I'll just, I'd love for you guys to call and visit with me and answer, and I can answer specific questions about how do I make this work with my specific situation with my specific kids, with this or that. I love to brainstorm with you, but as a, these are kind of some general principles, and I made some notes on my phone, so I'm going to look down real quick, and I'll tell you, but um, first, I don't want to discount a good babysitter. I have a fabulous babysitter, and I love her, and my kids love her, and she is amazing, and anytime that this that we don't fit things into normal routine, she is there, and when my husband, my husband travels a ton for work, and so in those evenings that I have chosen to work, if he's not home to be back up, she's here, and so I'm not going to discount a good quality babysitter, somebody that um, your kids love, that loves your kids, someone that does well, but here's one thing that I believe about babysitters, that they are you when you're not home, and what that means is if I'm, if I'm at home and I'm doing lunch with my kiddos, after lunch, I load the dishwasher, and then I might have to sweep the floor, or well, if everyone's napping and I'm home by myself and don't have any Mary Kay appointments, I'm folding laundry. And so if you are paying somebody to be working in your home, she is you while you are gone. She's sweeping your floor, she's loading your dishwasher, she's folding laundry, and that's just expected. And that's and I would let her know up front, this is what I expect of you. I need a mommy helper, I need somebody that can be here and do the things that I would do when I'm not. Um, and then leave her a list. Hey, today, these are the things I need you to get done while the kiddos are napping. And so if you're going to pay someone to be in your home, make sure you, that that money is well spent, not just on your kiddos, but that things are getting done. So first, I don't want to discount a babysitter, but there are ways, I think, to work your business without feeling frustrated with your kids at home. Um, first thing is to have a schedule. I'm a huge, huge, huge believer in sleep schedules for your children. Um, they should have a very regular nap time. They nap at the same time every single day. They go to bed at the same time every single day. That might take a little bit of work to get your children into that kind of routine if they're not already, but I promise it is so well worth it for your business. One, for them, for their little growing bodies. They need they need sleep. They need a regular schedule, but also for your business. If you know that your child naps at 10 and 1 every single day or just 1 o'clock every single day, whenever, um, then that makes it easier for you to be booking facials, that people can come to you, and that you are pre-picking your times to work. I have a whole other video on plan sheets. Watch that. Um, but that you're pre-picking times to work. So to call somebody and say, are you more free during the day or evenings? And if they say day, say, great. I have an opening at my home at 1 o'clock. And nap time, you work during nap time. All of my kids are in bed by 7, 7.30. My babies, my two little ones, go to bed at 6. And my Ellie, who is 5, goes to bed at 7. Usually she likes to play in her room, but it's pretty safe for me to book a party at 7.30. Even if my husband is not home in that evening, I can book a party at 7.30 to come to my house because she is in bed. One thing that I have found in my years of parenting now is that children wake up at the same time no matter what. If I put them to bed at 6, they wake up at 7. If I put them to bed at 10 o'clock, they wake up at 7. And so it's super, super important that you have those extra hours in the evening. If they're going to wake up at the same time either way, get your extra hours in the evening. And so 
I put my kids to bed very early. That gives me open spots to work in the evening. And so that's going to give you, that's my dog. <laughs> that's going to give you some options to be able to, to give people options. Uh, I have an afternoon time or I have an evening time. Second thing is I don't want you to feel bad about making people come to you. I do not go to anyone. I do not travel to people. I want you to think about yourself as a service. You offer a service. If you were getting your nails done, you wouldn't make an appointment and then say, great, what time, you know, what time will you be at my house? That's silly. If you're getting your hair, your hair or your nails done, you go to that girl. And so you are the same thing. You are offering a service. They need to come to you. And so you pick a time and they come to you. And that way you don't have to leave your home if you have kiddos napping your kiddos asleep. Second is a Third, I don't know what number we're on. Third, you double book, double book, double book, double book everything. And how I double book is I never go to people. People have to come to me. If an appointment is in my home, I can have, I can book two appointments into that same spot. They can sit around my table. I have an office, they can sit in my office. Even if your home is small, clear a space and put out chairs and make a little spot where you can work. I don't want you to feel like you have to have a huge Mary Kay office or something special. Clear a little space where people can sit at your bar or they can sit at your kitchen table or sit wherever works. But if people come to you, it gives you the opportunity to double book. So I, I, I double book all of my appointments. If your home is not conducive to double booking or you are not comfortable doing it there, then you need to find a neutral location. So I live in a very small town in Idaho. Um, the next big city is about an hour away. I do a lot, a lot of work there. It's called Twin Falls. Um, I work in Twin Falls a ton and I work at a little ice cream shop. It's called Kiwi Local and they have a party room. They let people reserve it for free. And so I reserve the party room. It has a big conference table and I will book two or three appointments to come at the same time. And that way if one cancels, I didn't drive an hour and I'm not sitting there by myself. If you are trying to work around children and you're trying to get as many Mary Kay hours in as possible, and I know how hard that is with little people at home, those hours are valuable. You can't afford cancellations and so every single appointment needs to be double booked. That you have two hostesses or two facials coming at the same time. To do that, find a neutral location. If you need to find a coffee shop that has a, you know, maybe a table around a corner that's kind of quiet that you could use. Um, any place with a party room that does birthday parties, anything like that, your unit meeting. If you are not going to a unit meeting, if you're not coming to mine, if you're not local to me, find a unit meeting. Um, they will always have an opening for a skincare class. And you'll have a sales director there and other consultants to help you. And so you can book 10 or 15 people. You can do an entire month's worth of work and two unit meeting nights. And if you only worked unit meeting and you had 10 people at each one, you could see your 30 faces easy, even if a couple people canceled. So work smart instead of harder. So my advice for you guys is we find very regular schedules. Nap time, bedtime, work in the evenings. Find a neutral location so that you can double book if you do not want to double book your home. Um, and then let me look at my list and see what else I wanted to tell you guys real quick. I had a whole list. Double booking, stop going to people, find a neutral location. Um, I think that's most of it. I think that we hit everything. And this is only going to be like 10 minutes long, which is awesome. So here's what I want you girls to do. I want you to print a plan sheet. Go to MaryKay.com in the search bar, type in weekly plan sheet. It'll come up PDF, print it out. And then I want you to block out every single week. I work these times. And then it makes it very easy for your family to know what you're doing, for you to know when you call somebody, when you have openings, and do not feel like you need to flex around other people's schedule. I'd also block in maybe an hour or two of office time. Maybe that's going to be nap time or evening um, after kiddos are in bed. That's when we're making the phone calls to actually book the appointments. That's when we're doing sharing follow-ups with your sales director. Um, any of entering customers into your in-touch, any little office things. Um, even if you're only holding one party a week because you're doing this pizza money hobby, I would block out three hours, two to hold a party, one to make the phone calls, enter your customers, things like that. And so per party, I would have blocked out about three hours, but if you're double booking them, you could see two parties in that three hours. Um, if you're going to be doing four parties a week, maybe you're working six hours. I earned my first car, guys, honestly and truly working 10 to 15 hours a week. And as a sales director, I do work closer to 30, but still only half of them. I don't even work 30 hours a week. That's a lie. Maybe 20. Um, but 10 of them are still doing my, my beauty consultant stuff, 10 to 15. And then I have a little chunk of office time that's more as a sales director because I have new consultant orientations and stuff like that. But guys, 15 hours a week will earn you a car if you can block it out. And if you can find two evenings a week when your kiddos are in bed and 
and a check in the morning on a Saturday, there's no reason why you can't flex this around your kid's schedule. So um, if you have specific questions, you want to say, how do I make this work? How do I make that work? I want you to call me um, and I will we'll make sure we get it figured out. But I don't want anyone not working because you feel like I don't know how to do it with my kiddos because your kiddos are the reason that you work. They're not an excuse to why you don't work and to have your kids grow up and say I would have I would have worked and I would have earned a car and I would have done all these cool things but you were at home that is not a cross that your kids need to bear that is not their their fault that they were you know that situation and so don't don't put that on your children your children are absolutely the reason they're the reason that I work now my kids love our car that Ellie asks when our pink minivan is coming she doesn't understand what a Cadillac looks like and so your kids are your reason that you work and if you need me to help you guys learn how to flex that, then I am happy to, to be in the field with you. And it's a little bit of trial and error for a little while, but we'll get it figured out. So that is just a really quick scheduling. And then I want to visit with you guys one-on-one -on -one about specific situations. Thanks, guys.